what we have right here is the long-awaited Samsung Galaxy Watch 3, which is a sequel to the Galaxy Watch originally released two years ago. And this watch has been creating a lot of excitement. There have been a lot of leaks about this watch. A lot of people have been talking about it. And finally, we get to get our hands on this and see what this watch is actually capable of doing. Now, first things first, you might be wondering why this is the sequel to the Galaxy Watch 1 and not the Galaxy Watch 2. And the reason for that is because the Galaxy Watch 2 came out the same time as the iPhone 9 and the Galaxy S11. In other words, it never came out. They presumably skipped 2 and named this the Watch 3 to avoid confusion with last year's Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2. Now the Watch 3 comes in three different colors, but only two per size, so this is the 45mm version. There's also a 41mm watch. The 45 right here comes in either Mystic Black or Mystic Silver, and if you want to get Mystic Bronze, you have to get the smaller watch. Now the screens are actually substantially larger on these than a lot of other similarly sized watches, so this, the 45mm version here, has a 1.4 inch display. As you can see, a really nice small bezel all the way around, not a giant black circle anywhere. I think it looks really good, and if you want the 41mm version, that's a 1.2 inch screen on there. So definitely thinner bezels on all of these. They all come with premium leather straps, 22mm strap on the larger body here, very easy to remove that, and you can easily put a silicone strap on there or whatever you want. Compared to the original Galaxy Watch, this one's definitely a bit thinner and lighter. That was the first thing I really noticed when I took it out of the box, was actually how light it was, which is definitely an advantage if you plan on working out with this. Now looking a little closer at the mechanical design here, the front of this watch, like I said, 1.4 inch screen, it's extremely bright, I can wear this out in the broad daylight, and I have no problem seeing this. Likewise in dim settings, it also has very vibrant colors, dark blacks, it's just a really good screen as is pretty typical of Samsung products. On the outside we have our physical rotating bezel, has that really nice satisfying click, it's really easy to navigate your interface, and honestly that's one of the big selling points for the Galaxy Watch in general. If you're between the Galaxy Watch and any other Wear OS watch, the rotating bezel is definitely a big strong point for this device. On the right side we have two buttons, the top one is our back button, if you press and hold that it summons Samsung Pay. The bottom button is our home button, it also opens up your app drawer, and if you double press it, it can open up the app of your choice. So for me, I have the music player, if I want to quickly get into my music controls, just double tap that. If you tap and hold that, you can summon Bixby, or you can just look at the screen and say, hi Bixby, uh, if you are into using Bixby. On the left side, we have our speaker, kind of lower on the body there. We also have a microphone on this watch as well, so you can field phone calls. And then flipping it over, I know there's, there's a lot going on with this watch. You'll notice it looks a lot like the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2, because in many ways, it is really similar to that. So we have a heart rate sensor, SpO2 sensor, I'll talk about those later on. This also has IP68 water resistance, and it has Qi wireless charging, so they give you a little magnetic charger or you can charge this on the back of like a Galaxy S20, for example. Now this watch is supposed to have blood pressure monitoring and an ECG, and if you're in South Korea, you already have that, awesome. But if you're not in South Korea, so like here in the United States, it has not yet been released. And I'm gonna say right now, if that is the only reason you're buying this watch is for an ECG or for blood pressure monitoring, then I recommend looking for a different watch. I know, I'm not saying I don't necessarily trust Samsung, but I'm just saying last year, they released the Watch Active 2, and they promised to have an ECG very soon. Here we are a year later and they still never released that feature. A lot of people are really upset about that. All right, so let's get into some testing with this watch. Starting out with the accuracy of the workout tracking, I went for a four and a half, five mile run. And unfortunately, as you can see right here, a lot of the heart rate data was actually missing. I believe this was because the leather strap that it came with doesn't really have enough elasticity to really keep all the heart rate diodes on your wrist. So unfortunately, I will have to buy another band and I'll test that out for a future video for you guys. But the good thing is looking at the GPS, if you zoom in on the map, there was a little bit of drunk wandering here and there, but for the most part, I found it to be surprisingly accurate. When it comes to the battery life, that's always a weak point of smartwatches, and this one is definitely not the strongest out there, but it definitely gets you through at least one and a half to two days per charge, depending on how much you're using the GPS. So from my experience, after like a 45 minute run, I lost about 7% battery, which I was honestly pretty happy about, although I wasn't using Bluetooth to listen to music. Then looking at the speed of the device, as you can see right here, I closed all the other apps and opening one at a time, you can see that it opens them relatively quickly. Honestly, I have no problem with the snappiness of this watch, going around, apps open quick, uh, but then getting into the Bixby test. Hi Bixby. What's the weather in Clearwater, Florida? I mean, sometimes Bixby is just, you know, Bixby. I was disappointed to see that they did not add Google Assistant on this watch, or at least have the option for Google Assistant. All right, and then of course this watch has a microphone and speaker on board. You can use this for Bixby or for fielding phone calls. So let's see how well those work. Hey, so this is what it sounds like when I'm talking on the watch. If you were going to field a phone call like this, it would sound something like this. So comment down below and let me know how this sounds to you. 
talking on my watch to you. So this is what the microphone sounds like. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys can hear what I'm saying or not. Uh, again, this is just a regular call. I'm talking like a normal distance away from my watch. So let me know if you can hear me. Another great thing about the workouts is you can actually customize the screen entirely, all three of them, so you can have your first screen display like your time and your heart rate or whatever you want to show, and I found that really useful. And speaking of customization, using the Galaxy Wearable app, you can actually customize a lot with this watch. So if you look at the bottom of the screen here, you can go from home to watch faces or to discover, and of course discover has a lot of apps and watch faces. Watch faces has exactly what you think it would, and from the home screen, you can actually go down and change a lot of the settings with the watch. Now you could ch change these in the settings within the watch, but sometimes it's just easier to access them from your phone. And again, if you lose your watch, you can just tap on find my watch uh, and you can easily find it. It'll make a sound, it'll vibrate, or you could even get the location of it. Now for the internals of this watch, there's a lot going on under the hood, but it has NFC for Samsung Pay, it has Wi-Fi, it has GPS, it has Bluetooth. The Bluetooth can connect to your phone as well as to earbuds or to another computer if you want to use like PowerPoint controls, for example. And it also has, like I said, heart rate sensor, SPO2 sensor, and accelerometer on board as well. The accelerometer is especially useful this year because they did add something called fall detection. So if you are older or high risk of falling and maybe you live alone, having fall detection on here could be a really good feature so that if you fall, it gives you, you know, a little notification. And if you don't, you know, silence that, then it will contact your emergency contacts and get help for you. The operating system for this watch is Tizen OS, and they have some new features on here this year with the Watch 3. So some of these include new watch faces, which I think, honestly, a lot of them look really cool. They have one that's like the active weather showing up in the background in case you don't have a window to see what's actually going on outside. They also have fall detection, as I mentioned. They have auto chat history. So if you just open up your messages, it shows up with all the previous ones from your phone. And on top of that, there's a lot of other ways you can reply to text messages, for example. So of course you have quick replies, you have voice replies, you have voice to text, you have emojis, and you also should have bitmojis on here as well. And of course this watch also has a lot of other things like find my phone, offline music, Spotify controls, and a lot of other apps like that. And one thing it does not have, unfortunately, is offline Spotify from my testing. Uh, I've not been able to get Spotify playing offline on this device. Now, as far as health tracking goes, there's really not a whole lot new compared to the Watch Active 2 on this one. So we have a lot of different workouts. We have seven that auto detect. So if you just start running, it detects that you're running and starts a workout. You have sleep tracking, you have a lot of stuff like that. So for a quick interface tour, you can see that if you rotate the bezel this way, it brings you through all your different widgets. Uh, and so you can also swipe through these manually as well. And if you go to the left of the home screen, you will see your notifications. From the home screen, if you swipe down from the top, it brings you to your quick access toolbar. Just your quick settings for going into night mode or going into underwater mode or, you know, things like that. Now, if we tap on this button, that is your back button. Like I said, this one is your app drawer, and you can also navigate around this with the bezel as well. And you can see you have lots of different apps that you can get on this watch. The ones that it comes with, so like PowerPoint controller, voice recorder, Spotify controls, uh, Samsung Pay, Microsoft Outlook. You have a lot of different things you can get on here. And of course, you can also go into the Galaxy Store and get even more apps for this device. And of course, if you're listening to music, you'll see a little Spotify icon on the bottom and you can tap on that and it'll open up Spotify so you can change the song very easily from your home screen. So clearly this watch has a lot going on, but who can actually get this watch? Well, it actually works with obviously Samsung phones, works really well with them, but it works with almost any other Android phone out there. As long as you're able to get the Galaxy wearable app and the Samsung health app, you really don't even need the Samsung health app if you don't want it. But likewise, it works with iPhones as well. And in fact, I've been using the Galaxy Watch Active 2 for the past, I don't know, six months or so with an iPhone just to see, you know, the ins and outs of it. And of course, there are a few small limitations uh, with regards to like texting and calling. But for the most part, the watch works really well uh, with almost any phone out there. So if you're out there and you have an iPhone and you don't like the rectangular screen, some people don't like that, then you could definitely still get this device. So the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 here has a lot to be excited about. It looks really good, it's very capable, but of course there are a few drawbacks you want to be aware of, and the first and probably foremost is going to be the price. So this watch series is starting at $400, which is more than $100 more expensive than the Galaxy Watch Active 2. Which brings me to my next point, that I will be comparing this to the Galaxy Watch Active 2 in the next couple days. If you want to see what the differences are and see if it actually warrants the upgrade from the Galaxy Watch Active 2, definitely consider subscribing to my channel, and I'll be putting that video out in the next couple days. All right, so overall, what do I think about the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3? Well, I'm really impressed, honestly. I think it's the best Samsung watch made to date, arguably one of the best smartwatches on the market in general. But of course, I will continue to test this to find out how accurate the sleep tracking is and stuff like that in the future. 
So comment down below, let me know what you guys think of the Galaxy Watch 3, if you like it, if you don't, if you plan on buying it, or what you wish this watch had. As always guys, thank you all for watching, I'll see you next time.